Hello class, I'm going to talk right now in this video about the use of marginal analysis. Um, so this can be kind of a, tri a tricky topic for folks. Whenever you encounter this word marginal, you want to recognize that we're focused on really the last unit that's occurring. So for example, the marginal benefit of something. Okay? That would describe how much more benefit you get from only undertaking the last unit. The marginal cost associated with something cost associated with making only the last units. We're just focused at the edge or at the margin when dealing with marginal concepts, of course. All right, so this is kind of, a, as I said, a tricky idea to understand. I think it's useful to apply this to a real-world concept to see the usefulness of marginal analysis. So let's suppose for purposes of demonstration that you're thinking about how much time to devote to reading your textbook. So we've got a graph here that I've put on the board, and the lines here are going to represent the marginal benefit and marginal cost associated with the activity. Right? And so the marginal benefit then, that would represent how much more knowledge you have, how much extra benefit that you get every time you read the textbook for one more hour. Right? So the way to interpret this, for the first hour of reading the book, however high that marginal benefit curve is, that's showing you the benefit that you get from the activity just that, that hour. Marginal benefit of the second hour is measured by this height and so on. Okay. So you can see, you know, reading the textbook, and a lot of things in fact, the marginal benefit of an activity starts out relatively high, and then as you do more and more of it, the marginal benefit starts to wane. It starts to get smaller. That's just what we're, we're modeling here. You get a lot from reading at first, but if you read for a whole bunch the extra benefit that you get starts to get small. That's all that's saying. Horizontally here I've modeled the marginal cost that might go into, that might be associated with reading a textbook. Right? Every time you spend an hour reading your textbook, that means you can't take that hour and do something else on a more productive day. So you have to give up something. That's the, the extra cost associated with reading a textbook. Okay, so we can then use this marginal thinking to make a good prediction about what the best amount of reading the textbook would be. Right? This is kind of a silly example, but you can apply this to much more serious problems as well. So let's see how this works. We're going to want to weigh the marginal benefit and marginal cost for each unit and stop at the point where you start becoming worse off with each additional hour spent studying. Let's start here with the very first hour that you might devote to reading your book. The graph is telling us that the marginal benefit would be very, very high, and the marginal cost would be very, very low. The marginal principle tells us then that you should do this, right? If the marginal benefit of an activity is really high and the marginal cost is really, really low, engaging in that activity is going to make you better off, be it reading the book, going to the gym, spending money on advertising for a firm, whatever it is. If the marginal benefit is higher than the marginal cost, do it. Let's evaluate this then for the second hour, right? We're seeing then that the marginal benefit is not as high as it was for the first, but it's still really high compared to that relatively low marginal cost. You should read for the second hour as well, is what this is saying. And so on and so on and so on, right up till you get to this spot here. That looks like that corresponds with our fifth hour. That's the case where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. If we're thinking rationally and applying this marginal principle, this person should stop reading at that point because beyond that fifth hour, we encounter a situation where the marginal benefit, what you get from reading the book, is no longer justified relative to the cost. Okay? So this will just be one simple example then in working with the marginal principle, thinking at the marginal. There you go. 